Our last story of the day is going to be about Chapel Roan. She responded again. So this is like the third video I think she's done. And I think it's good to go over it because it also allows us to have a larger conversation. I just woke up and to like people just skewing it y even more. Dorsing and voting are completely different. I don't agree with a lot of what is going on with like policies. Like mm -hmm. obviously policies of the right but also some of the policies on the left sure that's why i can't endorse that's why i can't like put my entire name in my entire project behind one because there is no way i can i can stand behind some of the left's completely transphobic and completely genocidal views so yeah, there are in huge problems on both. You know what is right and wrong, and so do I. <laughs> Trump for real, but some of the shit that has gone down in the Democratic Party that has failed people like me and you. True. And more so, Palestine. Sure. And more so, every marginalized community in the world. So no, I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna settle for what the options that are, are that are in front of me. And you're not gonna make me feel bad for that. So yeah, I'm voting for Kamala. Okay, Kamala, 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 Kamala Harris, Miss Kamala, Coconut, maybe she's Indian, maybe she's Black Harris, Kamala, 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 Kamala. It's really, it's confusing. Which one is it? Is it Kamala? A Kamala? Who knows? Who really knows? Listen, people were mad at her over that. And it did. It made my eye go like this. Look, you know how bad I am at pronouncing names that I had to read a blog on how to pronounce Kamala's name so I wouldn't get it wrong because I've heard it's wrong. I've heard it like seven different ways. And of course, it's all from the Trump memes that I'm like, wait, how do we say her name? And you guys know, I don't care if you call me Brittany or Brittany, like it's all the same name to my brain. But with Kamala, it's different because they're using a mispronunciation of her name as like a virtue signal. So conservatives mispronounce people's names and like everyone gives each other nicknames. It's stupid. It's a way to like just make people feel bad, right? It's all silly. It's all whatever. So her mispronouncing the name really triggered a lot of people. And so people were like, what the f is that why are they mispronouncing her name and i was like what wait wait ania says i have to remember mamala kamala mamala kamala mamala kamala with the coconuts mamala <clears throat> mamala kamala <laughs> the point is is like look i'm not trying to like uh um say that it matters too much but it's interesting that she said her name so incorrectly and then uploaded the video but i think you know again who knows why people do things i'm not trying to like really come for her over it, but it stood out to me as well. I was like, oh, interesting that you know all these people are watching you and you didn't go back and like change it. That's a little interesting, but also like you mispronounce names, mispronounce things all the time. It's not that big of a deal. And I think the people that just want to hate Chapel, go ahead and hate her. The people that want to love her, go ahead and love her. I think the people that are just interested in watching a person go through it, I think that's really what we're doing here. Because look, this isn't a position anybody wants to be in. Well, let me rephrase that. Chapel doesn't want to be in and some people don't want to be in but she's in it and I think that's something to take into consideration if you reach fame if you reach status you might be a person people want to hear from and you have to decide if you want to do that also remember much like Brittany Broski Chapel Roan made a career for herself being an advocate so the dilemma of being an advocate is people are going to expect you to advocate So again, I think it's very okay to be upset with her, to not be upset with her. What's important is that you don't target another marginalized community as like an evil person because you're not taking into consideration the nuances. There's a lot of nuance here, right? Who knows what's at play, but also maybe you're putting harm behind her words that don't exist. But also you have to realize that for a lot of people, like if you're an extreme kind of vegan and you decide to like live in a tree for two years so they don't chop it down. I don't know, I'm coming up with stuff, okay? 
Maybe that's not what an everyday vegan would do, but some people are going to do that and it's going to work or it's not going to work. But that would be like kind of extreme. Chapel feels centrist to progressives and liberals, but she might just actually be so extreme that you're not vibing with her. To some extent, the more extreme view would be like the system altogether. But I'm not settling for what has been offered because that's questionable. It's questionable that our... Our, our actions of our government, the actions of the internet, the actions of you and me. If this is what you are not understanding, you know what? Endorsing someone, if someone is publicly endorsing a political figure, that doesn't even mean that they're going to vote for them. Because as I said in my other video, actions speak louder than words. And I'm not going to let this narrative of like me not it playing both sides. No, no, no. This is not me playing both sides. This is me questioning both sides because this is what we have in front of us. So, okay, chat, great point. Uh, where is it? I, blah, 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 blah. Isn't it the isn't it the leftist critique that Dems also f over people? Yes, I do think most of the people that are upset with Chapel are probably liberals and Democrats. I'm assuming they're not progressives. I don't know what Hassan has to say about this. I actually haven't watched his coverage of her. I think I saw that he wants to interview her, but I wonder what his perspective is since people are always mad at him for being too extreme on the left. But that's coming from centrist Dems. Like if you're a centrist Dem, you're going to think Hassan is too extreme. You're going to think Chapel's too extreme because you're going to want to win the game. Look, if you want to win against Trump, you got to vote for Harris. If you want to win the game, like I'm playing the game, okay, I don't like centrist Democrats, but I'll play the game with you because we're neighbors. And also I'm going to vote Harris. I already voted, right? I already sent in my little vote. So again, when we're having these conversations, we have to be open to the fact of what perspective it's coming from. And I think Chapel isn't coming from that like Democrat view, right? I think a lot of progressive people aren't interested in voting. They're not interested in being a part of the system, but also I think a lot of us live, I'm going to say this with the most peace and love. I love you all. I think all of us are kind of delusional. I just think all of us are lying to ourselves and we have a cognitive dissonance happening. I think a lot of us want to be angry at everyone but ourselves. And I just think you should stop being angry at everybody, including yourself. I just think everyone has sort of lost the plot in their own life because when you're blaming other people all the time, you forgot that it has nothing to do with them. Right? My my parents are so sweet. They sent me a video today on RFK Jr. And they're like, can you please watch this? And I was like, and I'm watching it. It's RFK Jr. complaining about the foods our kids are eating. All the foods I grew up eating. When I was growing up, my liberal best friend wasn't allowed to have sugar cereal. Her mom only fed her like frosted mini wheats without the frosted, guys. Frosted mini wheats without the frosted. Like what the fuck is the point? My parents would say, oh, they're so strict, these liberals. They won't let their kids have sugar. Now, 20 years later, my mom is like, let's look at RFK Jr., Betsy. He wants Americans to eat better. Look at these Democrats who make our food so bad. You know, Democrats are the reason we don't eat well. Um, it is infamously known that Democrats eat better than Republicans. It is infamously known that liberals take better care of their health than Republicans. I have no idea where this switched or if it is switched, but it's kind of like, I think we're all just sort of, we've lost the, our minds in a way like come on guys i grew up my whole life with conservatives eating like shit. and my parents by the way the most sugar we had was eating our breakfast but like we really did like we cooked meals at home my parents are immigrants like we made a lot of food ourselves obviously but for them to be like democrats are the reason our food sucks uh, what are you talking about what are you talking about so again with peace and love i love everybody but please stop messaging me and stop being mad at chapel roan and leave me alone because ultimately, if you want to make the world better, start with yourself, girl. I know you're overeating and I know you're undereating and I know you're spending way too much money on makeup when you should spend it for your future home. And I know you already gave up on your dream of having a future home because you decided to let the colonizers win. Don't let the colonizers win. Play the game better than them and be good along the way. If you want to give up, you give up, but keep me out of it. Because if I wanted to give up, I would have myself like I was supposed to, but I decided not to. So no way am I going to keep a living and not win this game. Could you imagine staying alive and not winning the game? Girl, nobody got time for that. Nobody got time for that. So if you look at, at, look at my statement and you're still like, she's just playing both sides. Like she doesn't want to. No, you're not getting it. I'm critiquing both sides because they're both so up. 
voting is all we have right now in the system. And so I encourage it yet again, vote for who in your mind is the best option for what we have right now. Because it's all we can do. And I hope this makes it clear that no- She's so like neurodivergent in the way she talks. Like she's got so many like, I mean, she's bipolar, but she has like so many like neurodivergent in the way she communicates, you know? She really feels like a homeschool kid that really did something with her life. I love that for her. Relatable. No, I'm not picking the sides of what we have right now. Yes, one's obviously better than the other. But Jesus Christ, I hope you don't settle for what we have and put your name behind someone that you don't fully, fully trust because of their bl no, no, no. Don't be dramatic. Chat says you're not getting it, Chapel. One side wants to end democracy. I don't think you guys understand. They don't want to end democracy. They want to live in a world where they feel safe. I think what we need to actually have a conversation about, because, like, again, like, people, you're doing the thing again. You're doing the thing again that is, like, you have to be able to have the conversation without dehumanizing the right for me to actually care about your opinion. If you want an opinion on the election that matters, you can't demonize the right. That's the real challenge today, kids. Because the right, it doesn't matter what you call it, that's the world they want. Like countries that are all Muslim, obviously not everybody in the country is Muslim, but you know, there's like an expectation. If a majority of the world wants to be a certain way, that's just called their version of freedom. The whole point of America is that it was started by a bunch of kind of loser rebels, but also who made something interesting on the backbone of a and the slavery that was used to build this country, right? We're still fighting about it today. But it's kind of one of these things where like everybody participated. Don't try to like clean your hands of, uh, of the way you participated. Okay. So it's not about ending it. Okay. They really want to end democracy. They think they're saving it. Yes. You must understand that Trump voters think they're saving democracy. They think liberals want to end democracy. They say the same things about you. They're saying the same thing about you. From their perspective, they think progressives are literally trying to destroy America because you keep talking about destroying it, which I totally understand. From their perspective, they keep hearing, I want to take over the system. I don't want to fund the police. They're like, so you want to destroy democracy? They think they are fighting for democracy. Okay? So then you have to ask them, okay, what do you think democracy even looks like? Like, what do you think that looks like? And then you have to actually dissect that and talk about it. I got a comment in my video from like a conservative who was like, you would never hear a conservative care how Chapel Roan was voting if she was voting the opposite. But see how the progressives eat their own? Don't even make me pull your non-existent hair, you balding Republican. Listen to me when I say this. Republicans are such big shamers. Republicans, all they do is shame. Shame, shame, shame. Which is why it's ugly to see it from a progressive Seeing progressives shame each other is ugly because we're used to our conservative parents doing it. Don't be your MAGA parents. Be better. And you're not going to be better if you keep doing it. So talk about Chaparron like I am. I'm critical. I told you yesterday I didn't respect her decision not to come out in full force for Kamala. Because I, Kamala, Kamala, Kam, oh, Kamala. Oh, no. See? Kamala, Kamala. Fuck. Ooh. See, I hate it. I hate how sounds get stuck in my brain and then I doubt myself and I gaslight myself into convincing myself I don't know how to pronounce things. Anyways, listen. I can be critical of her choices without shaming the existence of this woman. She is allowed to have her own journey in the same way that I am, okay? But I am not here to tear another woman down who's in the process of processing her own existence, right? Okay, so... Listen to me when I say this. If you want smaller government and less people in your business, start with the basics. Food, water, clothing, healthcare, bodies. You can't have a government that's not minding its own business if it's coming for your medical care. You can't have a government that's minding its own business, okay, if it's going to control how you do everything in your life, including how you treat your kids. Now, at the end of the day, there is a fear here. Everybody should have a fear of living in a world where parents can give their child medical care, no matter what that looks like, in a world where people will deny their kids blood transfusions because of religion. Keep in mind that when we see Republicans or conservatives not give their kids medical care because of religion, we're like, that's crazy. When they see us treat our trans children, they're like, that's crazy. We all think the other person's crazy. 
How do we have a conversation about humanizing all of us or do we fully accept we're all crazy? Because at the end of the day, there are some crazy ass progressives and there's some crazy ass conservatives. Okay? The people in the middle are still going to have issues with how we solve problems because humanity isn't a monolith. So maybe you wouldn't get along with a chaperone, but maybe you wouldn't get along with a me. Maybe you wouldn't get along with a lot of people. So we have to accept that we are only the thing we can work on. We have to do it. Us. We're the thing. Work on yourselves and worry less about chaperone. Like I said yesterday, my day is not impacted by how chaperone votes. I already voted and I voted for President Harris. Not because she's perfect, but because she'll give me what I want, which is an ability to get health care. One of the most sacred and important things I think Americans deserve is health care. Wait in actions. I just woke up and to like... Pe- okay, that's it. So Chapel Roan went on and made this TikTok and then somebody made another TikTok that I thought would actually be pretty cool to watch. This Chapel Roan is a centrist. Chapel Roan is a... Rep- I love a chart. So let's sit down and watch this. This is from Hunky Handsome. This Chapel Roan is a centrist. Chapel Roan is a Republican conversation is making me so angry. I got off my colored f-ing markers. I'm going to try to spell this out because I was under the assumption that everybody kind of already knew this, um, but obviously not. And so maybe this will actually give you a lot of insight that is needed. Before we get into this, I need you all to have a little bit of this because this is not going to be an easy, lazy. And also, I think this is important because, hold on, chat says all I care about is your music. You asked me earlier, what do I think about like Cardi B in relation to Julia Fox? Listen to me when I say this. I love Cardi B's music. I think Cardi B's done a lot of really bad things in her life usually out of survival situations. And I think a lot of people like to come for Cardi B for the wrong reasons, but I don't think that it makes her music different for me because the crimes she's done haven't been bad enough, but she is transphobic and she has been in the past. I don't know if she's still transphobic, right? But it is one of those things where like, I love Cardi B's music. I like a lot of people's music. I like a lot of black people's music and you bet they're transphobic, okay? So we love people of color, but we also have to deal with their transphobia. And I would know because I come from an Assyrian family and they're definitely transphobic. You know what I'm saying? So again, like I love our communities, but our communities are, they have problems, guys. They have problems. And you're like erasing the fact that we have problems. We have problems. Humanity has problems. Yes, and very colorist. Oh my God. The colorism I grew up with was outrageous. So offensive. Jesus. And it's there in our own family Christmas parties. So please, with peace and love, I can't worry about this Midwest queen. I have the Assyrian queens I'm worrying about at home. Okay. Conversation that you can easily digest. You have to actually use your brains and think about what's happening in front of you. The conversation happening is that Kamala's here, Republicans here, on the left and the right, and Chapel is not endorsing either of them. And she's refusing to endorse Kamala. So that makes her a centrist. She's between these two. That is not what's happening. Chat is trying to help me pronounce words. And then, and then Kay goes, black, black, period, Kamala. We're really enunciating today, guys. We're really enunciating today. So when you look at where the Democrats are and the Republicans are on this chart, it says left and right and the center, right? It's, it's balanced. But in reality, that's not what's happening. Ooh, I love Center's this. over here. Ooh, look at this chart. I love a chart. I really love a chart. Ooh. And the Democrats are like still right. And I'm being generous putting them this close to the center. But I think that for simplicity's sake, this is easier to, to understand. The Democrats are left of the Republicans. With See, that- and this is what people <clears throat> don't understand is like, This is where people get lost because, again, we always simplify everything down to the main loudest bubbles, which is, like, fine, but it's not like that, okay? There are people of color that are progressive, queer, LGBT. It's like like uh, Palestine. People are like, I can't believe you're voting for Palestine when they're anti-LGBT. Yes, but you know, like, LGBT people live in Palestine. It's why, like, having a Muslim government in a Muslim country doesn't make any sense when you're going to give birth to gay kids. It doesn't make sense for homophobic parents not to consider they could have gay kids. You know, so at the end of the day, it's like sitting here and you have to like, you have to understand, like you have the chance of giving birth to a kid that doesn't agree with you. There are people in places all around the world that are existing in bubbles that think this doesn't exist here. Like I remember when I was closeted in the, in the Republican stuff and I would like vouch for gay people and people would be like, Brittany, 
are you gay? And I'm like, what? And they're like, you talk very highly of gay people. And I was like, what? Me? Gay? And they were like, you just seem very sympathetic. I was like, well, shouldn't we be as Republicans? Like, don't you think the government should stay out of people's like business? And they were like, um, and I was like, um, and you don't, and this is why I say you can talk about how much you want to limit government, but actions speak louder than words. That doesn't make them left. That doesn't make the, the, the views that they believe in line up with what the people over here want. It's not good enough. And then Chapel over here, who's been literally walking the walk for years, sees what's going on over here and is like, I'm not going to put my name, my face, my, my everything behind this because this is scraps. This is not good enough for me. And that is fair. Critiquing Democrats does not equal being a Republican. True. And I understand why a lot of people are. And again, this is the same reason people were mad at Hassan because they were saying, hey, you're like making people doubt voting for Kamala Harris. We have to let her win because Trump could win. Yes. If you're playing the politics game over values. Yes. But then maybe your value is that I'm going to play the politics game because like obviously my personal values are very different than when I vote politically, though I try to align them to the best of my ability. But this is what I said, say about life. I can get along with just about anybody. I can get along with transphobes as long as we like agree to disagree, not to bring it up. Or if you're abusive towards people, I'm going to stop you. Right. But it's one of those things where, look, if people who suffer from racism are willing to cause that much harm to somebody else, right, we have to think about the conundrum of this. What an irony for us to be discriminated against and then to discriminate. And this is all of humanity forever and always. So every time you have a baby, you're bringing them into the world that will hate them. On some part of the planet, your baby will be hated. Whether it's white or black or gay or straight, some group on the planet will hate them because they were born a certain way. And then you have to have a relationship with that, right? So again, I don't always get the ability to have a neighbor that perfectly aligns with my values. But as long as we can get to the point where we're not hurting each other, I'm good with that. Now, some of you would say, but voting for Trump is hurting me. I agree. I agree that that's true if you are a particular part of the minority status. I think it's hard to ask 40 million people who feel like they're doing the right thing to see themselves as the villains when I think everyone sees themselves as the hero, right? People aren't just voting for Trump because they're malicious. They're voting for Trump because they think they're saving America. They're saving America. They're saving America. Just think about that narrative. The road to hell is paved in good intentions and Republicans have a lot of fucking good intentions and I'd really like them to like... Now, it would just be so great if Republicans could be honest with themselves because a lot of those people are suffering under the bubble they live in. A lot of those people are gay. A lot of them are trans. You know how many Republicans I have told me, oh, everyone has fantasies about women. Everyone's a little gay. It doesn't mean you act on it. And I'm like, girl, why are you working so hard to hate yourself? Why are you working so hard to hate yourself? And that is the conundrum of humanity. That we are not free, even in the land of the free, to really be honest about our lived experience. And so you have to pick your bubbles well, and you have to be around people that get you, and you have to accept when people can't. Not because they're evil, or not because they're bad, but because their joy looks so different from you. Just a reminder that my parents are the rebels in their family, and they made a bubble that's so perfect for them. And then they had 10 babies. And five of those babies, let's say, just in terms of, let's say, maybe, are like, I don't like this bubble. I want to do something else. I took my parents' favorite thing about life and I smashed it to the ground. And I was like, it's gay. I want something better, something gayer. And then I went and made my own bubble. And they look at my bubble like, oh, my God, I thought I raised you better than this. I thought I gave you a better hope for your future. They gave me the best thing I could ever want. A rebellious parent made me a rebellious kid, made me... I picked myself in the same way they picked themselves over their bubbles. And here we are, baby. Gay. They. They. I don't know. I'm going. I'm trying to rhyme here, but you know what I'm saying? Okay. Scared 
because if this is how you see the world, if somebody, you know, strays away from this, you assume that you can either be here, here, or somewhere in the middle. And straying away, you would think that it's moving closer to the right. But that's not the world that we live in. Straying away is straying further left, straying, saying, this is not good enough. I'm going to need to see some real change happen for me to get on board with you. And do you see that that does okay, not... Okay, hold on. I definitely suggest people watching the Leaked Project 2025 videos. Who is that for? Because I guarantee you conservatives are going to watch it and most of them are going to... If you're a Trumper, you want Project 2025. If you're, if you're religious... Like, I don't, I've, like, the things I've seen from Project 2025, I'm like, yep, sounds about religious. Like, Project 2025 is not going to be a bad thing for my parents. That's what I'm trying to explain to people. Like, they can't, because some people have this idea, like, oh, if they just see the videos. Sure, if you're a centrist Republican, it might be the reason you don't vote Trump. But if you're a Trumper and you're going to vote Trump no matter what, like, girl, nothing you see is going to change their mind. Right? So, you know, just like keep that in mind that the people you mostly go for are people on the fence. But at the same time, like, what does that mean when, again, it's like going to a Muslim and being like, can you believe they're going to get rid of gay marriage? And the Muslim being like, yeah, bro, that's great. These are people that want to outlaw alcohol and porn. They want to make it illegal. You know how many religious people I meet who want to make these things illegal? Illegal. You know what I mean? So I think about that and I think about like, are you, I don't, I don't worry about these people, people that like, I don't worry about misogynist not being misogynist. Like if they want to try to not be misogynist, they can go on that. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like girl, okay. Now, again, there are always the people that are the most extreme in the party that want to dismantle the system. If you want to dismantle the system, voting doesn't make sense because voting is participating in the system. I recommend participating in the system. I do. Or I recommend going with your values and not voting, but it is what it is, right? I don't think you're bad not voting. I don't think you're good for voting. I think you're just doing what you think is right. And hopefully that's not voting for Trump, but hey, that's my personal opinion. Not me being a Republican. Republicans are over here in the extreme right. That does not make people over here upset with this whole thing going on over here, a Republican. So we've gone over this and hopefully we all understand this. But the next reaction that usually comes after is, but it's an election year, shut up. And to this I say, no. A lot of people are afraid if you start doing this too much, if you start getting too loud, if you start actually talking about the issues that are happening here, the voters are going to shift right and we're going to get something even worse. Or they're going to completely remove themselves and then this is going to happen eventually anyway. But within the conversation of what's happening with Chapel and a lot of people, she said herself that she's still voting for Kamala. Also, guys, have you ever thought that maybe she's just neurodivergent and feels like it's dishonest to be excited to vote for Harris when she doesn't feel connected to her? Because, like, that's the thing that I don't think people understand is it might feel fake to her in the same way it would feel fake to me to wear a filter on screen. You know how we talked about that yesterday? Like, there are just things that, like, are really hard for our bodies to handle. So for me, it wouldn't be a big deal for me to vote Harris. I'm voting Harris. I already voted Harris. Vote Harris. Like, that's easy for me because, like, I can get behind this part of, like, getting with the system. But if it, like, felt bad, I wouldn't do it. Do you understand me? If I felt bad about doing it, I wouldn't do it. But I feel good about voting for Harris, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you I feel good about it. You should do it if you want to. But I think for her, she feels bad about it and she feels like it betrays her values and she's trying to sleep at night, right? And that's the thing that we're having is like, I voted, I'm proud I voted, but at the same time, like I'm looking at the Democrats with a raised eyebrow. I'm looking at them with a raised eyebrow. It is not, hello, Biden is sending troops into Lebanon right now. It better be to liberate the Lebanese people. Okay, so again, okay. Everyone has to sleep at night and they have to feel good about it. You can't feel good not voting for Harris, but maybe she can. She's going to vote for Harris, by the way. Right? She said it. She's voting for Harris. But what I'm trying to explain to you is the actual workings of the human condition. I'm not trying to explain to you the basics of what you think is happening because it doesn't matter. It's not always about you. But see, you're making it about you. When you're mad at somebody, you're mad at yourself for wanting them to change, not understanding them, or you're upset that they can't change. At the end of the day, it isn't about them. It's about you. 
I want to give you tools to be okay with the way the world is. Because at the end of the day, when you shut your bedroom door, it's just you inside that room. That's the only relationship that matters. Everything else is just a bunch of energies clashing up against each other. Okay? Just breathe and think about your life and remember you are a part of history. If it works for you to vote a certain way, do it. If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. Don't do it just because everyone else is. But then decide why you vote in the first place. If you only vote when it matches up with your values completely, I'm assuming you never vote. Right? Because I don't know how a candidate could ever give you everything you need. And if you need the world to be perfect, especially a political candidate, then I think you are not having a grounded relationship with reality. No political candidate is going to give you everything you need. And at the same time, if you're going after marginalized communities for not voting the way you want or for not acting perfectly the way you want, you might as well call yourself a colonizer. All of you need to be quiet. And if you're frustrated with people, look in the mirror. All right, Jessica says, I hope Bernie sees your comment. Cameron, Cameron, where is Cameron? I found you from the Leo Skeppy video. I used to live and breathe him until you made me think deeper about what he was saying. Hey, shout out. Welcome to the community. Look, I wish the best for Leo Skeppy, but deeply unhealthy people who are bitter and resentful and want to hurt people, I'm not about. If you want to hurt people, please go to therapy. Please meditate. Read a book. Okay? I just want you to understand that this channel is here to give you tools to be at peace with life. Not to give you tools and more ammunition to go after Chapel Roan or other people. Just because you don't understand them. Okay? Okay, we're not going to finish this video because it's too long. I'm going to go ahead and leave it to you guys in the chat because I think that's probably, we should probably leave it here. Look, regardless of where you are on the spectrum, you are someone's worst nightmare, someone's enemy, someone's villain. So fully accept that you are the villain in someone's story and then decide how you want to point fingers. Because that is the hardest part for all of us to recognize because we really do think we're all the heroes. Every person who votes for Trump thinks they're saving America. And every person that votes for Harris probably thinks similar. What a conundrum. What a deep conundrum we're all facing. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da